Welcome to this video on Underwater Acoustic Networks in NetSim. In this video we'll learn how to simulate and understand the performance of the underwater acoustic networks. Let's start. Click on the Underwater Acoustic Networks Library, which is present on NetSim home screen. This will take you to the simulation environment, which is a grid view, where you can create the network scenario. In this example, let's set the grid size for the environment to 5,000 meters cross 5,000 meters. For this, you can change grid size under the grid properties. Set width to 5,000 and length to 5,000. Now we can design our network. We can create large scenarios in NetSim. For this example, we choose the simplest network with two nodes. Click on the underwater device icon present in the toolbar. Once you click the icon, bring the cursor to the grid area and drop the device by simply clicking on the grid. They are connected automatically using an ad hoc link. For this example, we set device positions at 2 kilometers from each other. For this you have to click on Underwater Device 1. Under the Properties tab, you can click on the Position option and set the X, Y and Z coordinates for the devices. Modify the X coordinate to 1000, Y coordinate to 2000, and Z coordinate to minus 100, which is the depth of the device. Similarly, you can set the X, Y, and Z coordinates for underwater device 2. Modify the X coordinate to 3000, Y coordinate to 2000, and Z coordinate to minus 100. Specific parameters related to the underwater acoustic networks can be accessed via the interface physical layer properties. These parameters include source level, antenna gain, forward error correction, FEC, coding, enabled by default, modulation techniques. NetSim supports a range of modulation techniques, including QPSK, BPSK, FSK, 16QAM, 64QAM, and 256QAM. Coding Rate NetSim supports coding rate of 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourth, and 5 sixths. Frequency Band Data Rate Receiver sensitivity, it defines the lowest power signal level at which the receiver can detect the acoustic signal. Bandwidth. These parameters are initially set to default values, and users have the option to customize them as needed for their specific network configurations. Now, click on Data Link Layer Properties. Slot length is estimated based on the largest propagation delay between the transmitter-receiver pair. In this example slot length is set to 0.75 seconds or 750,000 microseconds because distance is 2 kilometers. Now click on the ad hoc link. In the link properties, Users can configure the parameters of medium property. We model acoustic propagation for underwater networks. Salinity of water affects speed of sound in water. Surface wind speed and shipping factor is used for noise calculation. In this example, we set the temperature zone count to 1. Channel Characteristics NetSim supports no path loss and path loss properties. Under Path Loss, 
We have the Thorpe and range-based path loss model. In this example, we set channel characteristics to no path loss. Under the temperature zone, we have temperature and zone depth as parameters which affect the speed of sound in water. Now let us configure data traffic between underwater device 1 and underwater device 2. For this click on set traffic option from the menu bar. Click on the CBR icon from Unicast Applications to configure a constant bit rate traffic. Now click Underwater Device 1 and then click Underwater Device 2. The CBR traffic is configured. Now click on Application Properties in the right panel. Go to the Packet Size option. Packet size is set to 14 bytes keeping in mind that the acoustic networks use small packet size for packet transfer. Set packet inter-arrival time to 1 second or 1 million microseconds. The generation rate is calculated to 112 bits per second automatically. Now click on Configure Reports option from the menu bar. Enable Packet Trace. Click on the Logs icon. Enable Acoustic Measurement Log from the Network Logs. Now click on the Run icon from the Quick Access Bar and run the simulation for 1000 seconds. Once the simulation is completed, we get the results dashboard. Now we can observe the application metrics for the network performance. Number of packets generated is 1000. Number of packets received is 1000. Throughput is 0.000112 megabits per second or 112 bits per second. And the delay is around 0.98 seconds. We can see all the packets generated have been received at the destination, hence throughput is equal to generation rate. We can also calculate end-to-end -end delay using Packet Trace. Open Packet Trace from the Results Dashboard. Wait for the Excel sheet to be loaded and formatted. The end-to-end -end delay includes propagation delay which is calculated from speed of sound. The formula to calculate the end-to-end -end delay is physical layer end time at destination minus application layer arrival time at source. Now add a new column named end-to-end -end delay after file layer end time. Now subtract file layer end time and app layer arrival time. The average of the entire end-to-end -end delay column is the same as the delay in application metrics. Now click on the acoustic measurement log file from the results dashboard. Wait for the Excel sheet to be loaded and formatted. First column is the timestamp in milliseconds. It shows the packet reception time at the receiver. Second column shows the list of transmitters. Third column shows the list of receivers. In this example, we have only one transmitter and one receiver. Fourth column is the distance in meters, which shows the distance between transmitter and receiver that is 2 kilometers. Fifth column is the transmitter power, unit is dB per 1 micropascal, which is the source level that is set in physical layer properties of underwater devices. Sixth column is path loss. The value is 0 as the channel characteristics are set to no path loss. 
If users enabled the path loss model when setting up the network, you'll find the calculated path loss values in the column. Next column is the total noise, which is calculated using wind speed, shipping factor and frequency, set in GUI. Next column shows the SNR calculated at the receiver. Next column shows the receiver power which is the same as transmitter power because there is no path loss. Last column shows the BER which is dependent on SNR. In this video we have explained a simple scenario. Users can also create a scenario enabling the path loss models. Users can enable plots in GUI to visualize throughput versus time. Users can create larger scenarios and configure the network to see the impact on throughput. More information is available on our website www.tetcos.com. The link to the website is given in the description below. Stay tuned for more videos.